Hello friend, in this video we will discuss about different modes of heat transfer in which we will discuss in detail about what is heat transfer, what are the aim to study heat transfer, what are the application of heat transfer in the different field of engineering and then in brief we will discuss about various mode of heat transfer that is conduction, convection and radiation with suitable examples. So now when we will discuss about heat transfer, from the fundamental point of view, we know that Aristotle was the first who gave the opinion about heat. So whenever we are talking about heat, it is energy in transition. So there are different authors who gave different definition for heat transfer that include heat transfer may be defined as first you can say the science that deals with determination of the rates of such energy transfers or you can say another definition that is the transmission of energy from one region to another as a result of temperature difference between the fluids or substance or you can say the heat transfer may be defined as transmission of energy from one region to another or within the media as a result of temperature gradient. So you can say that temperature difference is a driving potential for heat transfer. This is a very important thing. Temperature difference is a driving potential for heat transfer whereas the concentration gradient is a driving potential for mass transfer and mass transfer is also known as diffu uh, diffusion. So whenever there is a temperature difference there is a presence of heat transfer. So, whenever we are talking about heat transfer, this subject, the very important thing is that there must be a temperature gradient. So, whenever there is a temperature difference, there is existence of heat transfer. So, now the another thing which we have to remember is why we have to study heat transfer. So, main aim or main to goal to study heat transfer are, you can say first, to determine the temperature field within the system under the steady state or under transient or unsteady state condition and second to estimate the heat transfer through the system boundary under steady or under unsteady state condition means we have to study the heat transfer subject to know what is the temperature variation or temperature gradient in the given system under steady or unsteady state and our second aim is to find out what is the rate of heat transfer through the system under study or under unsteady state condition. So for the entire subject these two are very important goal why we are studying heat transfer. So first we want to know what is the temperature variation into the system and second what is the rate of heat transfer through the system. So the next question that will come in our mind is what are the applications of heat transfer? or where we can utilize the knowledge of heat transfer. So friends, heat transfer is found everywhere throughout the life and that is helpful to the society and to the industry as well as it is very helpful to us to solve our routine life problems. You can uh, see here an engineer utilize his knowledge of heat transfer either to protect the equipment against excessive heat gain or heat loss or to calculate the heat transmission in most effective and economic way. So now we are going to discuss different applications of heat transfer in the different field of engineering as well as we will discuss application for real life. So first you can see in the design of nuclear and thermal power plant that include steam generator, condenser, air preheater, economizer, reheater, furnace and other heat, heat exchange equipments then solar energy conversion for space heating and electric power production in the internal combustion engine including radiator and water jacket design as well as in the refrigeration and air conditioning system that include the evaporator, condenser and other heat exchange equipments as well as the operation of above system is depend greatly on the effective heat transfer in the heat exchange devices. So 
the refrigerator or air conditioning system is available at our home we learn uh, this power plant equipment that is a steam generator economizer air breather regenerator reheater and all these thing all these are heat exchanger and all these are a part of heat transfer topic so in our routine life as well as in industry we will find different application of heat transfer and see some other application list is available that is design of cooling system for transmor a transformer generator and electric motors in electrical so you can see electrical engineering is mainly depend upon you can say transformer generator electric motor current carrying wires and all this thing so when we will go ahead we will discuss how we are designing the current carrying wire to maximize the heat transfer also you can find here Uh, if there is a no heat exchange from the transformer generator or electric motor they will they may burn they may not uh, working effectively so heat transfer is very important in electrical engineering in detail we will discuss in later uh, stage then you can say heating cooling boiling and condensation observe in the chemical industry and in other plants then thermal control of space vehicle then if we talk about civil engineering you can see construction of dam bridge etc heavy structures or you can say calculation of thermal expansion of suspension in bridge and in railway tracks in minimization of building heat loss so without knowledge of heat transfer we cannot calculate all these thing and in that case it may create a big problem to the civil engineers next you can say heat treatment of metals for the metallurgical engineers then the problem of thermal pollution associated with discharge of large amount of waste water from the power plant to the environment that is a big concern for environmental engineer or you can say that is again a cons- big concern for renewable and energy engineers or civil engineers so in general you can say each and every branch of engineering needs the knowledge of heat transfer and up to some extent the medical science need the knowledge of heat exchange without knowledge of heat transfer you cannot survive in any field of engineering either it is a mechanical or any other field of engineering so at later stage we are going to discuss in detail about application of heat transfer in all the field of engineering so friend now we try to understand what are the different application of heat transfer in the field of engineering from a to z so friends you know that in the aeronautical engineering in the automobile engineering in the chemical engineering as well as in the mechanical engineering the heat transfer subject is offered so by default you know that in all the branches all these four branches heat transfer is very important and that is very much clear to us even though we start to discuss in detail about application of heat transfer in the field of engineering from a to z so we start with a that is aeronautical engineering so we know that for the construction of aeroplane and when the aeroplane is at higher altitude the solar rays are available and it is creating very high heating into the system so as a aeronautical engineering uh, in the aeronautical engineering we must know how to maintain the cabinet temperature how to maintain the pressure inside the cabinet how to design different component of aeroplane so for all that knowledge of heat transfer is required second automobile engineering so we all are aware about automobile that is radiator in automobile or the fins which are attached to the engine cylinder it is liberating the heat to the surrounding for best working of automobile so in case of automobile engineering radiator or the fins which are attached to the engine cylinder is a very important and that design is mainly focused on this heat transfer point in the civil engineering we had discussed if we are talking about construction of dam bridge or any heavy structure or if we have to discuss about thermal expansion of suspension of the bridge or we have to design the railway tracks or we have to minimize the building losses definitely knowledge of heat transfer is required to the civil engineers 
in the chemical engineering we know that we are using lots of heat exchangers and heat exchange devices and that is a part of heat transfer subject a full talk about computer engineering you know that in the desktop if you will open the motherboard you will find that exactly at the back of motherboard as well as on the smps you find two fans are available so when you start desktop two fans will start to run what they will do they will transfer all the heat which is generated during the process on the motherboard that will be transferred to the surrounding and in that way they are maintaining the temperature of motherboard and because of that all the processes will occur in smooth way if the fans will not work what you will observe is what you will observe is the computer will hang and it will not give the proper result or not proper output so in the computer engineering in the computer as well as in the laptop these fans are available which are rejecting continuously heat from the motherboard and because of that smooth functioning of these devices are possible now if we we'll talk about electrical engineering part uh, we had discussed that cooling of uh, transformer rectifier generators electric motors then cooling of this uh, current carrying wires all these are possible because of knowledge of this uh, heat transfer subject if we'll talk about electronics engineering electronics and communication engineering or electronics and telecommunication engineering definitely the routers are there uh, entire system is there uh, uh, this uh, fiber optics are there all this want cooling and uh, when the cooling is provided they will work properly so for smooth working of all this equipment and instrument in uh, ec et and el engineering definitely knowledge of heat transfer is required if we we'll talk about food technology uh, in that case to preserve the perishable commodities we have to use either refrigerator or air conditioning system and in the refrigerator and in air conditioning system we know that evaporator condenser these are heat exchangers and heat exchangers will work based on knowledge of heat transfer if we we'll talk about information and technology engineering that is it engineering we know that uh, for the computers for the modems for the different devices cooling is needed in the it engineering also and based on knowledge of heat transfer these devices are designed if we we'll talk about mechanical engineering or mechatronics engineering we know that uh, in the mechanical engineering heat transfer is very important that is in case of refrigeration and air conditioning in case of ic engine in case of even if you we'll go for machining there is a tremendous amount of heat is generated whether it is a casting process or it is any kind of machining process heat will be generated and if you do not want to change the property of the material we have to provide the coolant and this coolant will carry the heat so indirectly heat transfer is very important and particularly when we will talk about casting machining when we will talk about 3d printing if we will talk about electro discharge machining if we we'll talk about cnc machining if the coolant fails the property of the material may vary as well as there is a severe damage to the uh, equipment instrument as well as to the workpiece so friends in general we can tell that in each and every branch of engineering start from aeronautical engineering to mechanical and mechatronics engineering that is from a to z we will observe that without knowledge of heat transfer we cannot survive in the field of engineering in the same way heat transfer is very important in the field of medical science also so now we have to understand what are the basic laws which will govern the heat transfer so you can see the list of law which are governing the heat transfer that include the first law of thermodynamics second law of thermodynamics newton's law of motion rate equation and law of conservation of mass so the first and second law of thermodynamics were discussed in detail uh, in our previous videos the links are given in the description box 
you can refer that and you can also watch the first and second law of thermodynamics which are also governing the heat transfer so now friends we have to discuss what are the various mode of heat transfer so there are mainly three mode of heat transfer that is conduction convection and radiation it is nothing like that one number is conduction two number is convection and three number is radiation in it is nothing like that at a time in real life more than two mode of heat transfers are available at a time but out of all the available mode one mode of heat transfer is predominant and others are less predominant so always in real life we find all the modes of heat transfer are available or present out of which at least any one is predominant so now in brief we will discuss about various mode of heat transfer with uh, example related to real life as well as with industrial application and at later stage in detail we will discuss about each and every mode of heat transfer as a separate chapters so now we will discuss about heat transfer by conduction. So conduction is the transfer of heat from one part of substance to another part of the same substance or you can say from one substance to another substance in physical context. So this is a very important there is a physical contact with the substance and due to displacement and vibration of molecules forming the substance means when there is a physical contact between two substances or from in one substance from one end to another end the heat transfer takes place mainly by means of conduction it is a micro form of heat transfer and the basic law which governs the heat transfer by conduction is a fourier law and generally in all the solids we will find heat transfer by means of conduction so if we talk about different example of heat transfer by means of conduction you can find heat transfer through the walls of building through the walls of heat exchanger in the metallic road in the heat treatment of steel forging or you can see some cases in which heat transfer by means of conduction is observed so you can say that in case of conduction heat transfer there is a molecular vibrations and we can not see the molecules so you can say it is a micro form of heat transfer and as there is a molecular vibration the electrons will play a vital role and when two substances are directly in contact with each other and both the substances have different temperature in that case heat transfer by means of conduction is predominant so here some examples are given to you what you have to do is you try to find out what are the other example of heat transfer by conduction you will observe in your real life and write that in the your comment box so we can understand what is known to you what you can observe in the real life for heat transfer by means of conduction heat transfer by convection is defined in different ways that include Convection refers to the mode of heat transfer in which heat is transported by the moving fluid particles. Second, you can say what is meaning of fluid. The substance which can flow is known as the fluid. So all the liquids and all the gases are example of fluid. So here the fluid particle will act as a heat carrier agent. Another definition you can see is the convection refers to the mode of heat transfer in which fluid particle act as a heat carrier agent. Or you can say convection is the transfer of heat within the fluid by mixing of one portion of fluid with another. And definitely now we can see the fluid particle so it is a macro form of heat transfer. So one can easily see the heat transfer in this case and you can say in general is convection that is equals to conduction plus mixing motion the basic law which governs the heat transfer by means of convection is the newton's law of cooling and there are two different type of heat transfer in case of convection that includes free or natural convection and the second is the force convection so if we talk about some example of natural or free convection that includes cooling of billets in atmosphere that is if we'll put cooling billets or uh, if we'll put hot billets into the environment 
or if we'll put hot met uh, hot metallic road into the environment then what is the type of cooling we will observe that is a convection natural convection if we'll put a cup of coffee or cup of tea in the open environment after some time its temperature will fall and that is also example of convection heat transfer naturally that is a natural convection heat transfer then you can find here the chilling effect of cold wind on a warm body then heating of metallic road in a furnace heating of room by providing the radiator into the room cooling of electric current wires or transformer in the atmosphere these are example of you can say natural convection or you can say the refrigerated one which is stopped or which is stagnant near the shop it is also example of natural convection if we we'll talk about some example of force convection you can observe the cooling of ic engine cylinder the flow of water in the condenser tube when during summer season we are in a room and when the fan is on it is a force convection when ac is on some wind is blowing it is also a force convection when the refrigerated one is moving on the road it is also example of force convection where some external agency is available for heat exchange process so convection is a macro form of heat transfer and generally it is observed in the fluids and uh, we can uh, see there are two different types that is a natural convection and force convection so here some examples are given for natural convection and force convection heat transfer again you try to find out in your real life what are the example of natural convection and force convection and do not forget to write that in the comment box now if we'll talk about the radiation heat transfer in that case radiation is the transfer of heat through the space or matter by means other than conduction and convection radiation refers to the transfer of heat from the body or from the fluid for which no medium is required or you can say heat transfer takes place by electromagnetic waves or you can say by means of energy packets or you can say it is also known as by means of photon that is called a radiation heat transfer in case of radiation heat transfer no medium is required in vacuum the best heat transfer takes place by means of radiation only because when in the vacuum no medium is available so heat transfer by conduction and convection is not possible the basic law which governs the heat transfer by means of radiation includes kirchhoff law wien's displacement law stefan boltzmann's law these are some basic laws which govern the heat transfer by means of radiation if we'll talk about some examples of radiation heat transfer that include the falling of uh, solar rays on earth heat leakage from the evacuated flask of thermos or dissipation of heat from the filament of vacuum tube or what we had discussed solar energy incident upon earth these are some example of heat transfer by means of radiation so now your task is again to find out what are the different uh, examples you can see in which heat transfer by means of radiation is predominant that you have to find out in your real life and in the comment box you have to write that thing so till the, now we had discussed about what is heat transfer what is significance of heat transfer what is the aim to study heat transfer what are the application of heat transfer in the field of engineering in all the field of engineering then we had discussed what is call heat transfer by conduction what are the governing laws what are the examples then we had discuss in brief about convection heat transfer what is the mechanism uh, what are the types of convection heat transfer what is the law governing uh, the heat transfer by means of convection what are the example of it in the similar way we had discuss about radiation heat transfer the law which govern the heat transfer by means of radiation mechanism of heat transfer and the examples 
so now the you have to find out what is the difference between conduction and convection heat transfer what is the difference between convection and radiation heat transfer what is the difference between conduction convection and radiation heat transfer what is the difference between thermodynamics and heat transfer all this thing you have to do by yourself you uh, if you go through this video you find out what are what is the difference between all this mode of heat transfer and in from the next video onwards we will discuss in detail about various mode of heat transfer if you like this video do not forget to subscribe this channel give like to this channel and share among your friends to this channel thank you have a nice day